Great. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Um, my name is John Volosarios. Um, I'm a managing director in Accenture's global blockchain practice. I'm based out of London, and I look after our financial market infrastructure uh, part of the business, which includes uh, the work that we've been doing in central banks, uh, digital exchanges, and um, also digital assets, uh, and, and so on. So it's quite a broad set of activities uh, that, that, that um, I look after uh, for the firm globally. Um, I've been the project lead on a number of CBDC engagements uh, over the years, including the work that we've been doing in Canada with Project Jasper, the Jasper Ubin engagement, and also uh, leading up the work that we're doing in Sweden for the eCorona project, as well as the work that we're doing with France, in France with the Banque de France, and also um, been involved with and uh, leading up the work that uh, we're doing with uh, the SARB and, and uh, the South African Reserve Bank. Uh, before I jump into a lot of details about um, about the project itself, what I wanted to do maybe is spend a bit a bit of time just going through um, what it is that what what is CBDC, our role, what we've been doing, and so on. And, and hopefully you'll find this interesting uh, as well. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out uh, to me, um, and I will make uh, this information available. All of this, by the way, is also available online, and you can find it by doing a quick uh, quick search. Um, We've been working in this area for a number of years. Our, our, our work in blockchain and multi-party systems goes back several years, and my uh, my sort of uh, role in this uh, has also been working with uh, key leading central banks around the world and developing CBDC uh, projects. Uh, we have a number of points of view that we've prepared. Um, the revolution of money papers, which you'll see here. In addition, digital dollar paper. You will know. Uh, you'll, hopefully, you'll know about the digital dollar uh, initiative in the U.S. Um, and also what I mentioned before in terms of the projects in Canada with Project Jasper and Ubin in Singapore, and also the work we've been doing uh, with the ECB uh, on anonymity and uh, uh, anonymity of and central bank and, and digital uh, currencies uh, with central banks. Uh, we also have um, been doing a number of, of projects with the financial market infrastructure uh, uh, initiatives uh, and um, yeah, hopefully you can see that now. Uh, um, yeah, uh, financial market in, uh, infrastructure and initiatives in this area as well. Um, we also have been doing a number of consultations around the world, uh, including the Bank of England, uh, ECB, and others that we've been uh, spending the time with uh, and, and focusing on, on responding to queries that they have about, about uh, central bank digital currencies in the wider market. We see a couple of things uh, more broadly and more generally in terms of trends. And I'll build a slide up and talk a little bit about it, and then we'll get into some of the more specifics of, of um, uh, other projects. First of all, uh, what I'd like to say is that overall central bank focus is intensifying, um, driven primarily by a couple of key initiatives, uh, People's Bank of China and um, Facebook's Libra uh, DM initiative. Um, uh, and also a number of other sort of global central banks playing an active role in developing sort of their point of view uh, and, and also developing and implementing solutions out there in the market. The, the interest is pivoting from wholesale to retail. Interestingly, it started in the wholesale space. Uh, and we also see a lot of experimentation uh, and turning into implementation. And this, this statistic actually is a little bit inaccurate because it's out of date. Um, and uh, but what you can see here is that there's a lot more uh, actually uh, a lot more going on than even when this was written uh, a few months back. Uh, there's advanced research and experimentation, things that have been uh, that we've been working on that build upon uh, other initiatives and other uh, learnings from previous uh, projects. As you can see, like uh, the stuff that in uh, Jasper and and uh, Intel Online Rock and 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 Coca in initial phases of that as well. And they're all additive and they all build upon each other, which is actually very, very, very good from an from a overall research point of view. The, the vendor ecosystem is maturing. Uh, we see a lot of activities happening in the wider marketplace. The vendor ecosystem um, is uh, developing quite quickly and a lot of the functionality that didn't exist um, a couple of years ago now is, is, is being developed uh, to enable a lot of the, what we're talking about from a, from a CBDC point of view. Uh, we also see a number of non-functional areas, especially around scalability, performance, security, and resilience playing a key role uh, and also focusing on, on how to enable that from a production grade implementation uh, and so on. 
and increasingly what we see is sort of the focus on, on standardization and interoperability. Uh, and I think that's a very important point because we need to make sure that central bank money remains portable and usable across a number of different uh, commercial and also retail uh, applications. But the one thing I wanted to bring to your attention on this slide is really that their optimal configurations are emerging. And by that, I mean that there are uh, ways to configure these solutions that allow you to sort of uh, optimize sort of a number of different business parameters and technical parameters as well and, and configuration points. This is the balance between stakeholder alignment um, and, and a variety of different technical implementations that doesn't, dis doesn't disintermediate and disrupt existing business models. And in order to enable that, uh, you need a multifaceted and, 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 a, and an approach that, that looks at a very broad set of, of requirements uh, for such implementations. In addition, addition to that, what I, I, I want to say here is that there is also uh, a, lot of, a lot of work has been going on of late in terms of the token-based asset exchanges. Uh, there are a number of key initiatives around the globe and stuff in, 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 in Asia and in Switzerland and other countries as well and, and uh, uh, across Europe and, and, uh, and even in Africa as well. Uh, at the end of the day, what we're seeing is there's a lot of, uh, a lot of interest in this space to develop these kind of token-based asset um, issuance um, initiatives. That ultimately leads, to, leads you to, so how do you custody those assets and then ultimately how you trade them. And in order to enable that, uh, you also have um, tokenized cash that, that creates sort of the ability to settle uh, these kind of transactions in a more efficient and a more risk-free way. Uh, in addition to uh, what we're seeing is sort of the convergence of, across these different areas. Uh, where um, a lot of these topics are now coming together and, and integrating it with uh, existing sort of uh, um, sort of traditional systems uh, around the world on, on uh, and, and enabling sort of hybrid solutions to sort of to be developed. Uh, if we take a look at uh, digital assets over the years, um, you know we've seen sort of the crypto digital assets uh, that have that have been sort of the original uh, ones. It's still around, still very active, incredibly active, actually, uh, by the looks of things. Uh, we're also seeing sort of uh, bank-issued digital assets or financial institution-issued digital assets uh, also coming uh, to, the, to the table as well and, and also uh, playing a key role in, in this wider token uh, economy. And what we, he what we see also see here is uh, sort of the development of CBDC. And, and what I mean by that is, is sort of this is the next wave of innovation that will drive the asset um, ecosystem in a much more um, uh, sort of a inclusive uh, global token economy. And so in order to enable that, you need central bank digital currency because um, you can't have a digital asset traded for uh, a traditional uh, settlement, traded and settled in traditional mechanism because you have an imbalance in terms of the, of the delivery and the payment side of that delivery uh, sort of having the immediacy and the risk nature of that uh, counterparty risk that's associated with it. So central bank money is a critical part in order to enable the global token economy from a commercial perspective, from a commercial banking and from an exchange and a digital asset perspective. But interestingly, also the same sort of uh, uh, topics come up in the retail point of view, although there's a whole host of other things from a retail uh, CBDC uh, dimension. Um, the capital markets of the future, this is our view of what we see happening around the globe and uh, from various projects, many of these are ones that we have been involved in. Uh, we also see sort of the, the benefits from central banks, buy side, sell side, CSD, CCPs and exchanges and regulators all playing a key role. Uh, and it should not be underestimated how important it is to have all dimensions of this uh, in any consideration, in any implementation, uh, as, as they all play uh, a, a, a fundamental role in, in enabling sort of the, the solutions uh, that are implemented. Uh, as you can see here as well, um, central bank money is only one facet of this. I would call it the oil in the capital markets machinery um, at the end of if it's a simplistic view of it, but at the end, this is sort of what enables sort of the settlement and the movement of value uh, when an asset that has also value is on the other side of that uh, transaction as well. So we see sort of central bank uh, money, uh, as you can see in the upper left-hand side of the slide, uh, being a key uh, contributor to uh, sort of the capital markets uh, of the future. 
there are alternatives, uh, and we see that as well. And, and, and one of those are things that we're going to talk briefly about uh, in, in the upcoming slide. Uh, really, uh, this started many years ago with digital coins, um, and um, you know we were looking at maybe they're not alternatives as such, but what they are is uh, sort of uh, uh, capabilities that that will continue to exist beyond uh, you know multiple iterations of, of, of innovation. And I see them all playing a key role, uh, whether it's digital coins or bank corporation or non-bank corporation coins, stable coins, bank coins, and consortiums. They all have a, a, a key role to play. Um, initially, we thought that I, I thought that you know one would sort of replace the other, but what we're seeing is that they all have uh, sort of a, a, a very niche area that they can serve their own clients. For instance, a bank coin can work across multiple geographies, um, multiple countries, uh, because of an organization being so big and, and, and pervasive in many countries, it can actually issue something that's a liability of a bank uh, on, on, its, uh, on its assets, a liability that, uh, that is a bank liability that enables the settlement uh, to take place in a more efficient way within their ecosystem. And so for them, they, they transcend sort of boundaries and borders and so on that you couldn't do you know, with a traditional CBDC, for instance. And so they have a, they have their own role to play, and I think that they, that will create a very interesting dimension in the future of payments uh, in, in, as things develop uh, in, in, the near, uh, in the near future. We also believe that central bank money is the safest form of money um, because of the underlying sort of guarantee by a central bank. Um, and from an international standards, uh, for f financial market infrastructure uh, is the uh, uh, preferred and, and required sort of method of settlement uh, for uh, eliminating things like counterparty risk in a trade and things like that. So I think overall what we see here is a, is a quite a broad um, a set of, of valuable uh, um, sort of uh, uh, areas that central bank money provides. Applications of central bank money. Um, this is sort of a, a version of our sort of uh, Venn diagram of all the different areas that we see. Um, and, and what we talk about here is sort of the retail space. I mentioned a little bit uh, before around retail, wholesale and securities trading, uh, other large value transactions, foreign large value transactions and offshore as well. And um, what we see in terms of projects is they tend to start in one area. Uh, and they'll spill quickly over into other areas as well because you can see that there's a, a, a tremendous amount of value in expanding the scope. So when you start with a retail payment uh, CBDC project, usually it never is about payments. It's about other topics that, that are much more uh, significant and they'll tend to uh, creep into the cross-border space and obviously also enable things in wholesale and then you can provide a whole broad set of, of, of view around CBDC applications. So uh, what I want to say with this slide is typically what we see is we start with, you know, uh, start with areas that just wholesale because they may be more straightforward because you're not dealing with mass uh, population and people and end users and things like that. But those can easily be extended out um, by sort of enabling additional functionality um, and so on. And same thing from a retail point of view, I would say if you start a retail project, you almost get wholesale for free uh, because you've, you've solved a much harder problem um, and dealing with consumers and dealing with users and so on. Still though, transacting with financial institutions, which obviously enables wholesale. And cross-border, that of course requires a lot more um, uh, more focus, but at the end, this is where there's a lot of friction uh, with uh, uh, in payments. And I believe this is an area that will have a tremendous amount of applications uh, in, in the whole CBDC space, uh, given the frictions that are there. And as a result, I believe that that's, that's going to be one of our, our key sort of area uh, that'll enable both retail and wholesale uh, to spill into the cross-border space. Um, I won't spend too much time on that because I want to spend just a, uh, focus the rest of the session on, on uh, sort of the Project COCA. Um, we see a huge amount of diversification. Um, uh, and, and one of the reasons why, um, you know, themes for CBDC, one is the diversification theme, just to enable um, a broader uh, resilience, uh, access and autonomy of, of, uh, of, uh, uh, to consumers and to users and so on. Uh, enab enabling that end-to-end -end settlement, as I mentioned before, around token-based financial market infrastructure. So uh, CBDC is a key component of that and enabling that. And also enabling new possibilities. And one of the projects that we've been working on is uh, a project in France 
uh, where we're using a tokenized version of a currency in, in, in another jurisdiction to perform security settlement. I think that's a very powerful message because um, you, that's never been possible before. You can't really take central bank money uh, apart from banknotes outside of a, of a, of a digital form, outside of a, of, a, of a current jurisdiction. And this is a, the first time that that would be done. And I think that, that's a, a tremendous uh, enablement uh, for future, future market and opportunities. And ultimately sort of the coexistence of all these things coming together. And the last uh, sort of uh, uh, aspect of, the, of this presentation, I wanna focus on, on Project uh, COCA. Uh, we've been asked uh, to, to develop, uh, to work with uh, SARB to develop um, uh, COCA Phase 2, um, which is basically issuing sort of a wholesale CBDC, uh, issuing a, a wholesale stable coin as well, the wholesale token, and, and then issuing debentures on a distributed ledger and enabling that uh, to, ena to enable sort of this initial purchase on a primary market against sort of these different uh, wholesale CBDC and, and, and tokens. And I think that's a very uh, unique and sort of uh, initiative because at the end, uh, this is uh, something that, that looks at both uh, CBDC uh, tokens, uh, commercial bank money basically, uh, and, and also uh, the, the issuance of debentures uh, and to enable sort of the payment and the settlement of the flows between all the different uh, the different entities. The, what, what I do want to say is that the, the CBDC is a new format of central bank money, as, uh, as I mentioned before in, in the presentation. Uh, it is an, um, another form of that, uh, of that central bank liability. It's fully fungible with reserve to account balances. Uh, and the idea is, of course, that financial institutions are the only ones that would have access to that, and as a, as a result, uh, be able to, to exchange them in exchange for reserves. Uh, and this is how that, that would sort of play out, and then transfer, uh, ability to transfer those wholesale CBDC tokens between each other. And that fundamentally gives them access to uh, sort of uh, central bank money, but in token form in order to be able to pay one another uh, in, in the, or to move funds between one institution and the other. And then finally, uh, looking at sort of the tokens, uh, which are, would be issued by the commercial banks to do something quite similar as well, and to be able to uh, enable um, uh, sort of the token issuance by commercial banks. Uh, of course, that's a different type of a liability because it's not a it's not a central bank liability. It's an issuer liability, commercial bank liability, and ultimately backed by collateral, um, similar to a stable coin uh, at the end of the day, and is um, uh, up, you know, and, and then we those are transferred and, and used to pay and settle uh, uh, transactions between one another. Uh, and used in order to um, uh, make those kind of uh, uh, settlement of payments between those institutions. And then finally, uh, sort of to also issue uh, debentures um, and, and provide uh, clearing and settlement of those based on the payment mechanisms that we just talked about before, and then to be able to sort of um, issue and settle uh, those debenture payments uh, from um, the from the central bank and then ultimately by the commercial banks that are participating in this initiative. Uh, needless to say, this is a very exciting project. Uh, first of its kind um, from what I've seen um, and I think combining sort of both CBDC sure. and tokens and, and the issuance directly by uh, central bank of debentures, I think is, a, is a, an incredibly uh, insightful um, and um, very unique sort of proposition that I think will lay the foundation for future implementations in this area. Um, sure. That's it for my presentation. Um, thank you very much for well, taking the time. Um, I, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me um, here or on John, my email. This is my yeah. contact details. I look forward to hearing from you and thank you very much. John, thank you very much indeed uh, for such a great presentation. Uh